vijana watafanya kazi lini ati mudhaura wa napewa kazi ya love set hii maneno kidogo kidogo bado mnasema huyu hajapata kazi huyu hajapata kazi yule nafasi bado iko politics of reward president uhuru's latest appointments elicit discontent Moranga kidnappings. Now Kimayo blames the law. Salva Kiri's troops prepare for assault on rebel strongholds. And revisiting the house of Yahweh. Just what went wrong? KTN Weekend Prime with Yvonne Okwara. Welcome to the Bulletin this 28th day of December 2013. It is the last Saturday of the year. I hope your festivities are going on well. Do remember to stay around and be careful. Welcome to our Bulletin tonight. We are live in the country and around the world online. www.ktnkenya.tv. Do catch us there. Let's start off our Bulletin tonight with the backlash in the government that has greeted President Uhuru Kenyatta's appointment of parastatal chiefs and board directors. The president appointed 26 parastatal and board bosses in what has been described as skewed appointments to reward his loyalists and associates. Political rejects have dominated the appointments, getting soft landing from oblivion, and out of the 26 appointees, only two are women. This as former head of civil service ambassador Francis Mudaura returns to the public service. The three-year contracts of the 26 newly appointed parastatal chiefs begin in earnest on the 10th of January for a span of three years. The appointments have reaffirmed the creed of awarding political loyalty and association. President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration has seen former head of civil service, Ambassador Francis Mudaura, bounce back into public service as the head of the Lamu Port and South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Lapset Corridor Project. Mudhaura, who served under President Kibaki's regime, was equally Uhuru's core suspect at the ICC before being set free. Mudhaura, I'm going to kazi a vijana job for kazi lini. But Mudhaura, I'm going to kazi a job for a set. is a very serious program which needs young, energetic, experienced individual, a personality that can move forward the economy of this country. Not just a mere person who retired in Kibaki regime is being recycled like Kakuna Vijano Engino Mesoma. He is a champion of Maneno Kwa Funerals and Streets. Sasa sijui kama aliandikwa kazi kuenda kuja kuangea kwa masishi ama aliandikwa kazi aende aongea kwa bunge. Another beneficiary is TNS Secretary General Onyango Olo, appointed as chairperson of the Lake Basin Development Authority. TNA is the president's party and Olo was pivotal in holding the party together and wedding off an attempted coup to oust the party chairman Johnson Sakaza equally nominated as a parliamentarian. Lina Jebik Lima who contested and lost on a TNA ticket in the Rift Valley has been handed a lifeline as chairperson of the anti-female genital mutilation board while Agnes Ndetei perceived Kathy Kilonzo fixer to bar her from contesting the Makweni Senate seat has been appointed chairperson of the National Drought Management Authority board. Ndetei testified against Kathy in the high profiled case. TNA's Makweni Senate Paul Loser Philip Kaloki has been handed the chairmanship of the Kenya Medical Training College Board. This after he decamped called coalition to TNA after losing the March 4th election and subsequently losing the Makweni Senate seat. The appointments are already causing a backlash with harsh judgment being leveled on the president's administration. Saizi tunaomba tu tunaomba. Mtuingize kwa hiyo serikali jamii ya waluya kama watu hawajaandikwa kazi sisi ndio tunafaa kufanya kazi hiyo lakini tukikuja hapa kwa wananchi na kuanza kuunganisha wananchi jambo hili haitasaidia najua mnasema kidogo atajapata kazi ya waziri sijui leo tumetangaza chairman wa nne wa parastatals wa kutoka western tutatangaza wengine Former Konoin MP Julius Kanesu's gubernatorial ticket failed to fly in the face of Isaac Ruto is the new National Water Conservation and Pipeline Corporation chief. 
Conesed vied on a Kenya National Congress ticket, but a close ally to the Deputy President William Ruto. Abdul Bahari, a loser in the Isiolo gubernatorial race on a TNA ticket, has equally bounced back as the boss at the Tana and Athi Rivers Development Authority. Political patronage and rewarding of loyalists clearly demonstrated in the appointments. Other appointees are Colonel Geoffrey Kingangi, said to be former President Mwai Kibaki's aide de camp, who will now head the National Cereals and Produce Board, while Simon Gisharu, founder of the Mount Kenya University, is the boss at the Geothermal Development Company. The president has nonetheless retained the new Kenya Cooperative Creameries KCC boss, Matu Wamae. Former Makueni MP Peter Kilu has equally been appointed chairman of the Water Resources Management Authority. Out of the 26 new appointees, only two are women. Samogina Ketian. Now the battle for political supremacy between Cord and Jubilee coalitions in Western Kenya continued today as a group of political leaders from the region hit out at residents for supporting the opposition. Deputy President William Ruto visited Bumula constituency in the county of Bungoma in efforts to consolidate Western Kenya where rivals Cord enjoy massive support. Ben Kitili has the details. <laughs> Western Kenya remains a contested region between the ruling Jubilee Coalition and the Minority Alliance Court, although courts seemingly have an upper hand. This was witnessed in the recently concluded senatorial by-election in Bungoma County, where courts Moses Batangula managed to retain his position in the Senate and vowed to continue fighting Jubilee's efforts to make inroads in the county. So we are not going to turn a diversion or attention to local leaders other than those who represent those that we know have been after my back. And those are the Jubilee Mandarins in Nairobi. Barely a week later, and the ever-lively Bongomo was a stage for yet another political event. As Deputy President William Ruto attended the homecoming of Bumula MP Boniface Otsula. A visit political pundits largely viewed as efforts by Jubilee to consolidate, to consolidate the region and a number of political leaders obliged asking residents to work with government. Siku ya mweshimiwa kibaki walikuwa na mawaziri sita. Attorney General Moja. Saizi tunaomba tu, tunaomba. Mutuingize kwa hiyo serikali. Jamii ya waluya ifil is recognized by President Uhuru and President and Deputy President. Zuri Western. Hii western mi naona unaweza kuikamata na kuikamata inaweza kuwa mara moja kile watu wanasema tu nikuwa wale watu nataka kuingia na western uangalia kabisa ujue na kina nani wao watu ambao wanaweza kukaribisha kwa watu wa kupika kura Ruto expressed the jubilee government's desire to work for all Kenyans asking western Kenya to unite Mheshimiwa rais na mimi tumeketi chini na wabunge wenu wa western Tumekete chini na magavana Na tumekubaliana vile tutaanda mambo ya maendeleo ya western province Na nyinyi musipige hatua ya nyuma ama ya kando Tutembe pamoja Bungoma governor Ken Lusaka led other leaders in promising to work with the Jubilee government For the sake of development Lusaka specifically has his work cut out for him as a majority of the Bungoma County Assembly is allied to Cord and Senator Wetangula. In this contest, if the governor of Bungoma was an issue, then he was a pawn in a game of poker. The real people were fighting against the Jubilee Mandarins in Nairobi. However, the leaders present in Bumula Saturday vowed to dare go against the grain. <laughs> The split of Ford Kenya and New Ford Kenya in Western Kenya has made for a tough political battle between Cord and Jubilee, with Cord seemingly outmaneuvering the arrivals in government at the moment. But Jubilee are not giving up just yet. Ben Kittil, KTN. 
Let's now take you to the crisis in South Sudan and the government there is now saying they will strike rebel leader Riek Machar's strongholds if his troops refuse to lay down their weapons. A spokesperson on uh, President Kerr's, or rather in President Kerr's government, says they are ready for a ceasefire but will launch an attack if Machar continues the bloodshed. But as KTN's Asham Willow reports, Machar is suspicious of the government's offer of immediate ceasefire and says he will not stand down. President Kiri's government was forced to extend an olive branch to rebel leader Riek Machar, a decision backed strongly by Eastern African leaders. The government shortly after released two political detainees allied to Machar. This gesture was, however, not enough for the rebel leader. The former vice president says he wants more, structured mediation talks, a leveled negotiation table, and his other nine allies released from government custody. Machar's Twitter account also gave an update, tweeting a link to this last video interview since the clashes erupted. It will not allow the SPLM to renew. We need the SPLM to renew by bringing in new cadres, young people coming up uh, to leadership. But if the process, the whole process of uh, renewal is dependent on one person, the view of the chairman, we say we'll end up with an undemocratic constitution. And we don't want to be party to such an undemocratic constitution. By Saturday evening, President Kiri's forces said they were ready to launch an attack on Machar's stronghold, Bor, in the state of Jonglei, if they reject the calls for a ceasefire. The rebel side is reportedly gearing up to reclaim Jonglei state from the government. The United Nations, on the other hand, is already preparing for a possible flare-up. 72 officers from the Bangladeshi police unit originally serving the UN mission in Congo has arrived in Juba to reinforce the UN troops already in the camps. The unit will patrol in Juba to protect civilians who have fled their homes seeking protection. These victims recuperating at a hospital in Juba are among those that will be under 24-hour protection. Unable to move from their beds, they recall how they got caught up in gunfire when the fighting began over a week ago. I was not aware. I thought that maybe it was a celebration from night till morning. So in the morning I called someone and asked him what was going on. He told me that there is something wrong. Then I told my children to go under the bed. Then I moved just a short distance from the door and I was shot. So I discovered my arm has been broken. The UN mission in South Sudan has reported that approximately 63,000 civilians are now sheltering in UN bases around the country. 25,000 in two Juba bases, 15,000 in Bor, 12,000 in Bentiu and 8,000 in Malakal. Kenya is still evacuating her stranded nationals in South Sudan and those in the far-flung areas are gradually being relocated to safe zones awaiting relocations. Asham Wilu, KTN Weekend Prime. It was a reprieve for television viewers after the Court of Appeal yesterday restored the analog broadcast signal for 45 days pending determination of an appeal by three mainstream media houses. The switch-off brought to the fore the low level of awareness on the whole digital shift, with many Kenyans unaware just how to proceed after the switch-off. KTN's Angel Katusia now highlights the basics of this new phenomenon of digital broadcast. Kenyan television viewers experienced an estimated 16-hour analog television switch-off between Thursday night and Friday 4 p.m. when the Court of Appeal ordered the Communication Commission of Kenya to restore analog transmission for 45 more days following an appeal by three mainstream media houses seeking to settle pending issues before the country can shift to digital broadcasting. However, despite the reprieve, the 16 dark hours for television viewers displayed how uninformed Kenyans are about digital migration. For example, in town, you will see a number of uh, vendors selling their boxes, and uh, most of these boxes, you will have to pay for them. 
but we do have universal boxes which Kenyans have, can buy and be able to receive all the free to air channels. These ones will cost anything between 4,500 and 6,000. So long as it is uh, able, it is it, it has the you know the DB, uh, digital video broadcast terrestrial two and the format of digital transmitter, uh, transmission that we are using is MPEG-4. If the appeal does not succeed, after the 45 days, Kenyans will have no option but to purchase set-top boxes and start the process of acquainting themselves with the new technological shift. The switch-off is part of the country's move to a digital platform, a switch-over that has had its fair share of problems. Most television sets in Kenya are designed to receive analog signals and TV owners will now need to purchase set-top boxes to transmit the digital frequencies. There has been concern over the price of boxes which, even with the waiver of excess duty, are still expensive for consumers. If you walk to, into a shop, they, will, they cost anything between 4500 and 6000 You should be able to get those. You have to be careful because you may get others which you will be charged a bit cheaper, but uh, they may last you maybe a month before they turn off. The switchover in Kenya is a crucial step towards compliance to an agreement reached during the Regional Radio Communications Conference 2006 where African countries agreed to analog switch off by 2015. However, it should be noted that East African community member states had agreed to switch off the analog signal by December 2012, the deadline of which Kenya and other countries missed. Tanzania is the only country in the region that adhered to the December 31st, 2012 deadline agreed by the five member states of the East African community. The regional deadline was intended to help address any problems ahead of the global deadline of 2015, a directive by the international communication unions. Angel Katusia, KTN. Let's go to matters of insecurity. At this time, Inspector General of Police David Kimayo has appealed to members of Parliament to amend an array of laws that will see serious crime suspects denied bail after being prosecuted. He was speaking in Moranga County where numerous cases of kidnappings have been reported in the last six months, with the latest being the kidnapping of a 100-year-old granny who was released by the kidnappers after her family paid an unknown amount of money in ransom. Betty Kialo brings us the details. Until December 26th, when 100-year-old Grace Njeri was rescued from her kidnappers, it had been a petrifying two weeks during which she was at the mercy of her captors. And a day after her rescue, Njeri still could not open her eyes or even say a word. Sitting by her side is her daughter-in-law, Lucy Mushiri, whom they were kidnapped with. While narrating their ordeal, she said the gang demanded money from their family and at one point threatened to kill them if their demands were not met. It was until the family gave ransom that they were dumped in Maragua town where they were rescued. This is the story of many families in Moranga County, a tale of ruthless gangs that extort money from desperate families after family members are kidnapped. In fact, According to our sources, there has been a total of 22 kidnappings in the last 11 months, all of them similar in nature. It becomes a challenge maybe to curb this because most of the cases when you arrest the suspects, the complainants don't want to come and testify. Why? They, 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 they say they are fearing for their life. However, according to Inspector General of Police David Kimayo, who toured the region, there are even bigger challenges in maintaining law and order in that county. Kimayo says that according to the Constitution, most offences are bailable. This, he says, makes it easy for criminals to avoid jail term and as a result, an increase of repeat offenders. <laughs> kama ni slave watu au mtumwa watu mama mzee chocho mdogo mdogo 
tunataka hizo seria sipitiswe na huyo mtu awepe mali ambapo anafaa kukaa bila kurudi kwa wanaume Kimayo also faulted some human rights activists who he says fight for the rights of criminals for getting the victims and police who are made victim during security operations. Na kuna watu ambao wako na sauti kubwa saidi wakati inapopika wakati wa kusema human rights. Wakati mama usiosoma mayako ndani kimapesa. Na mtu ameitisha pesa Four people including entrepreneurs in the county have been killed in the last six months by gangs which according to security chiefs continue to expand with recruitment of jobless youth. Sasa jukumu letu kama wananchi kwamba hawa vijana ambao wametoroka majumbani kwao wamjua kwa wapi mara wametokea mpashe polisi habari tuweze kuwachunguza jukumu yako ni kuja kutambia fulani mtoto wa fulani tunajua siku nyingi anajulikana mali alipo amerudi alafu mtoachie kazi ni sisi during the tour 10 police vehicles and 10 motorcycles were added to area police stations betikialo ktm Campaigns for the vacant Nyaribari Chache parliamentary seat came to a close this evening as most candidates conducted low-key door-to-door vote hunts across Kisi County. The most populous constituency, the by-election uh, that is in the most populous constituency, the by-election is as a result of a successful petition that Richard Tongi, Tongi of Ford People filed uh, a motion challenging the March 4th poll result in which the IBC declared ODM's Chris Bichagi the winner. KTN's Fred Mulo is in Kisi Town and gives us the latest. The whirlwind campaigns lasting only 10 days are probably the shortest time window that politicians have ever been given in Kenya's history. On opposing sides are 10 candidates all seeking to replace Bichage in the coveted seat. Uh, we want to remind IEBC that uh, they also have a huge stake in, in this by election that uh, their credibility will be on the line on monday so we request them to be neutral arbiters the odm aspirant who is seeking to maintain his seat has vied twice before and lost clinching the seat for the first time this year also in the race is tna's robert monda who had a respectable showing in the previous polls if we want to be in the government vote for monda this is the only way we we sit in the pre, in the in the government and that's where the cake of this country is shared i participate in possibly cut it with a cake and they share it to the rest of the Kenyans. We will be here with him in solidarity until the last vote is counted to make sure that also there is no there are no issues in that uh, during that process. So until the last vote is counted and tallied and announced we are here so that we can celebrate the victory uh, together. Okay. Another candidate who has been conspicuous in the campaign trail is Ken Omanga from former ruling party Kanu. This is a, a by-election as a result of a malpractice, uh, malpractices, and therefore I believe IBC this time, knowing that the, we have no other elections taking place on this day, are fully prepared. Um, other than the graffiti I mentioned on uh, some of our posters, uh, I don't have any other complaint uh, on the issue of the preparations. Nyaribari Chache is the administrative and economic hub of the Gusi region and all regimes since independence have always sought to control its political orientation. The direction in which its 58,000 votes go could shape politics in this region for years to come. From Kisi County, I am Fredo Mulo. Right, we want to take a short break right now on KTN Weekend Prime, but don't go too far because here's what we have coming up for you next. Living in harmony in the Tana Delta. Welcome back to KTN Weekend Prime and a reminder now of our top story in our bulletin tonight, backlash 
has greeted President Uhuru Kenyatta's appointment of Parastatal Chiefs and Board Directors. The President appointed 26 Parastatal and Board Bosses in what has been described as skewed appointments to reward his loyalists and associates. Political rejects have dominated the appointments, getting soft landing from oblivion. Now out of the 26 appointees, only two are women. All of this as former head of civil service ambassador Francis Mudaura returns to the public service. In other news, members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kigumo constituency are counting losses after the church-sponsored school was demolished and burned by area residents over alleged land grabbing. The irate residents who displayed anti-church slogans claimed that the church grabbed over 25 acres of land belonging to the public where new structures were under construction. Church uh, officials, however, claimed they leased the land from the County Council of Moranga. The residents, on their part, lament that they have never benefited from facilities built on their land. Officials from the County Assembly appealed to the residents to allow for investigations to take place, saying the solution will be found as per the Constitution. There's a lot happening in the world of sports and we will have all that for you after this break. KTN Sports. It's time for sports news now. The annual Kos Biro tournament entered its third day at the Karyoko grounds and it did impress as experienced players had a chance to battle against young talented and energized players from different parts of the city. The tournament has brought together 32 teams and the players are hopeful that the soccer management in the country will help nurture young individuals. The three of the ongoing Kothbiro tournament brought together experienced and upcoming talents across football circles in the countries with notable names among them Jamal Mohamed, Bandari custodian Wilson Oburu, Ezekiel Ontomo among others. Though not on his top gear, the players noted the importance of Kothbiro tournament. Wachitaji wale wadogo wadogo ambao bado wana experience wanapata kucheza na wale watu ambao wanaonaga daily wakicheza kwa Premier League so wanazidi kugain confidence ambao ni muhimu sana kwa development ya game yao. Kama sasa hivi una watu wameja uwanjani kwa hivyo hakuna wale shote ni za kwenda tembea sasa hivi sasa sababu watu wako pale mmoja vijana. Youthful players are with no doubt showing their soccer prowess at grassroots levels and they are all reasons to add the stakeholders to up their soccer managerial task in the country. Kitu inatuharibia pia ni management unapata kama tournament kama hii kuna wachezaji wengi sana wazuri na hawana hiyo motisha wa kuchukulia katika kucheza level ya ya juu sasa unapata maisha yao mingi inaribiki hapa chini challenge zile ambazo ziko hapa ni za ya juu na labda ni za kosa mali pa kwenda after hapa so tunataka kama club kama ni sofa park kama gormai ama fc leopard hizi club kubwa kubwa wakiwa na mahali ambao wakuna team za under 18 17 16 wazaji wanza pata mahali ambao wanaendelea na career yao the energetic and youthful players brushing their shoulder with some Kenyan soccer gurus knows it well what needs to be done for one to be on his or her best. Bola in a shortcut. Bola zima uti mazoezi. Weze nda kwanya mtiani kama ujasomo. The tournament boosts talented individuals and aids them to discover how they can make a difference in the near future. Moses Wahisi, KTN Sports. KTN Sports. Well, that's all we had for you. What a way to end the news with watching how the big boys do it and how they play. Thank you so much for watching our bulletin tonight, this last Saturday of the year. We will see you again tomorrow. Good night and enjoy the rest of your viewing.